right, I see the beautiful Gloria is here and is here. The roll call begins. Uh, narcissist, narcissism, manipulation. Uh, let's see who else we got coming in here. I see some other people in here. Ooh, I haven't seen before. I see your easy life is here as well. Thank you, everyone. As you keep coming in, I will keep the roll call the best I can to try to keep up with everybody. If I miss you in the roll call, just send me a DM and chew me out. It's good to go. Uh, narcissism manipulation. Thank you for being here. I'm not reading the whole name, of course, because it only fits so much on the screen. Um, we're going to talk about some serious things today, as we always do, with a little bit of uh, information, a ton of positivity. But more importantly than anything else, we are going to have some fun and take our happiness back. Uh, so let's uh, we're going to get our guests in in a moment. She is someone who I have been looking uh, so heavily to get on the show. She's a busy woman, uh, but she's kind enough to spend some time with us today uh, all the way from North Carolina. So um, everybody's starting to stream in. That's really cool. Let's get this puppy on the road. Perfect, 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 perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Loving it, loving it. Yeah, perfect. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? You look amazing. <laughs> you sound amazing. I hope you have an amazing time by the time this is all done. Uh, so let me get an idea of we're going to do this. Here. Hold on a second. We're going to make some changes here because we're it's Saturday. So I on Saturday have no common sense. Friday, Saturday, I'm done. No common sense. You're stuck with me now. So here we go. We're going to have some fun. One second. Get my chair. Get my chair. Get my chair. So I can sit down and hopefully get my in the shock and my head is cold i don't know what it is with me this morning <laughs> do not become well you know what let's do this let's do this old age is not for sissies i just want you young people to understand that okay <laughs> things start happening that you don't expect like <laughs> getting cold out of the blue i don't know what it is anyhow so um how you doing joe nope how you doing yo yo good <laughs> I've been practicing. I actually have my executive assistant here. At oh home. my goodness! Okay. Oh no! Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what's, what's the dog's name again? Henny. Henny, right? Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, Henny. Now, how did you come up with the name for the dog, Yo Yo? You know, I wanted to give him a human name, and okay. and I were bouncing ideas off each other, and we came up with the name Hendrix. Okay. Nothing to do with Jimi Hendrix. We really just like the name Hendrix. Okay. And we've been calling him Henny ever since. Ever since. Ever so since. So he, he is Henny. And he Henny, um, I mean, you have one of the coolest pictures of you and him together. <laughs> I just when I'm I'm a I'm a dog fiend, but I like I love cats too. So, but um, I just think it's one of the coolest pictures. So I'm gonna tell you something that that uh, it, it's not gonna make your life go up or down, but that is the picture I will definitely be posting when we're done today, uh, or sometime over the next uh, 48 hours, because awesome. uh, I love that picture. I just want to have it on my page uh, where everybody could see that. I just think it's a cool picture. But uh, the dog is just too cool. Look at he's, he can have sunglasses on. <laughs> or a bandana, and he would pull it off. He would seriously pull it off. Oh, he yeah. would be like the coolest dog amongst other dogs. They would look at him and go like, man, that dog is cool. Is. That is like a cool dog. Uh, how long have you had your dog? About, we got him March of 2018, so about three yeah. years. About three years. Okay, well, you know, three years, when a dog is with somebody for three years, I mean, you guys are married. Yeah, it's oh, like, yeah. oh, he's yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like married. All right, now. Please, I know we had our, our moments in, in the pre-show in which you had to educate me, but everybody has to do that because I don't know everything, and I love learning. I called you JoJo 
I don't know, uh, three fourths of the of the pre show probably before you actually tell me <laughs> that I was saying it incorrectly. You are a sweet, humble person. <laughs> but today, can you please explain for those who do not know you and they should, what is your full name? Well, what is your first name? So my real name is Johanna, and it's actually German, but it's spelt like the American Johanna. Okay. So typically when someone first sees my name, they're like, is it Johanna or Joanna? And I'm like, well, actually it's Johanna. And yeah. then my nickname, Yo-Yo, is spelt J-O-J-O. -O. So that's why most people think it's pronounced Jojo. And so I appreciate you making sure that I got a clear understanding of that. And so the rest of the day, uh, I will make it a point to say your name correctly. Is that okay with you, Jojo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did it to you. I was waiting to do it. I spent this whole morning waiting to do just that. I'm done. <laughs> Show's over. That's all I wanted to do. Right, I'm sorry. It's, again, it's Saturday. Um, I, I have to to dig a little bit to unwrap you because um which was i i love doing uh looking at your page and doing what i'm about to do right now because you don't have a lot of uh, meme postings and so forth to express what's in your head yeah. a lot of people do that of course because that's why instagram is so popular and big i love the fact about you is that you mainly have videos uh of lives that you've done and you have pictures of the work that you do mm -hmm. So we're going to go two roads. Okay. One, one, because every guest that comes on has to trust me. I don't do shows with people that don't trust me. Oh, so you trust me because you know that I'm going to go in a safe place. So you know this is okay. So first road, we're going to go down. You've interviewed people who you wanted to talk to. Mm -hmm. You, you do... Uh, with your beads and now stickers, I think I'm going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. with your stickers and beads, uh, mm -hmm. you're touching lives of individuals who want to contribute and support the mental health support work that you do. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the beads. Okay. Now, when it comes to the beads, how did you get started down that road? Yeah. So I started it in August. I, like most people think, actually not most people. Think 2020, right? 2020. Oh. August 2020. Yeah. This past okay. August. 2020? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> forgot what year we're in for a second. That's okay. Hey, uh, you know, after COVID, we all forget. <laughs> okay. I got you. Go ahead. So okay. you were saying, yeah. Um, so August of 2020, I was working remote, just always at home, always staring at my screen. I'm a project manager. So I work at my desk usually from eight to five or eight to six. And then just watching Netflix, you know, trying to be careful and cautious and not really out and about. And so I was just itching for something to do that was more creative and didn't necessarily want, include like me watching TV or just staring at a screen all day. Okay. And so I was thinking about, you know, something that would just be creative and fun, kind of like light to do. Um, and so I came up with the idea of making these bracelets. And so I started making them and I really enjoyed making them. I wanted to sell them and I was trying to think, you know, I might as well use the money to do some good. And okay. that idea came up, I came up with on donating the proceeds to a mental health organization. And so, obviously, there's so many great ones out there. Yes, um, obvious. Yeah. yeah. And so, I decided to donate to Mental Health America because their whole philosophy is really catching the symptoms early on. They're, I think they call it before stage four is their philosophy. Okay. So, kind of like cancer, you don't want to wait until it's too late. You want to try and assess the symptoms earlier on and figure out a game plan to stop or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But basically to prevent people from being diagnosed with mental health issues. Okay. So, so a preventative aspect of what they do 
to a measured degree. I kind of looked at their page as well uh, from looking at yours. So there is information that they have there that can be helpful to someone. Uh, uh, so um, it may not appeal to everybody, but I'm telling you, I found it quite helpful, just like you just mentioned. And I'm yeah. glad you had them posted on your page. What else came to mind? Now, that's who the that's who the donations can go toward mm -hmm. by proceeds from purchasing your beads and your jewelry. What else came through your mind in August of 2020 in the pursuing uh, oncoming months? Yeah, so I started small and my really good friend who was my roommate when I had my first job out of college in Austin, um, shout out to Alex if you're watching this. Wait, you got to say a little bit slower. Shout out to who? Alex. She got a page? Yeah. forgot. That's okay. Cat, Cat, no, she has a podcast called Project Grown Up. Got it. Project Grown Up. Project oh. Grown Up. Okay. Okay, yes. go ahead. You were saying? Go ahead. And so she actually reached out to me and asked me to join her podcast as a guest. And I was a little hesitant just because I didn't really feel comfortable talking about mental health. A, I'm not by any means a professional. And also just, you know, I didn't really want to share my own experience with mental health, but I agreed to it. I told her I would only stick to talking about needs for beads. Right, right. And so I joined and we started off talking about needs for beads. And then progressively, we just started talking about mental health in general. And so Alex does this podcast with, I think it's her cousin and her friend from either high school or college. And they started sharing their stories and experiences with mental health and just them feeling comfortable talking about it made me right. a little comfortable. And so I was able to open up. And so the podcast ended and I really just reflected on that. And I was like, wow, that's so cool to have a platform where I felt comfortable talking about something that re really affects everyone. And you, so you, I have to ask this question before yeah. you heard them talking, you were going to just stay reserved and, and hold back from sharing your story, hearing them speak about it. It caused you to be motivated to talk more about your journey in regards to mental health. Yeah, absolutely. So I was only going to stick to needs for beads and kind of keep it vague as to why I decided to donate to uh -huh. Mental Health America. Right. But hearing them talk about mental health in their families or friends that had mental health issues, right, right. it kind of really made me realize everyone knows at least one person right. from mental health issues. Right. And so at, at some point from that moment to today, excuse me, <laughs> To today, you progress to telling more about your life then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I feel very comfortable talking about it. Um, for those of you that probably don't know, I had a family member that was diagnosed with bipolar and depression in October of 2019. And we tried to get them the help that they needed, but it kind of backfired. And this person has cut everyone off in their family, all their loved ones, um, friends, family, has quit their job. We don't know where they are. And just obviously this experience has not been by any means great or good or even okay. But just being able to turn that experience into, I guess, something somewhat positive and just right, right. being able to show people that we all go through these types of things. Like, we all have someone, a loved one. I certainly never expected this person to have a mental health issue. So, so what led up to that moment or time frame? that the the family recognized they needed to get a diagnosis or get that person help. W what patterns did you or others recognize that they needed help? That could be very helpful to someone that will see this upload later. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm trying to think how it first started, 
but they were calling someone about I think it was their TV was just they thought it was broken or being weird and that person asked them okay so you know is it is the volume not working is the picture kind of funky are the channels not flipping like how is it being weird right right and my family member was just like I don't know like it just is and we we're like okay so is like what's just not and they weren't able to explain what about it wasn't working and they kept saying you know something seems off i feel like someone's watching me mm -hmm. and so this person had a visitor come stay in her apartment and my family member told the visitor that basically they wanted to change the locks because they thought that you know their furniture was being rearranged and that someone was like replacing the paintings and so I guess the biggest symptom was kind of like paranoia, just thinking that like there was someone playing a game in that person's life. So paranoia started to be something that the family recognized. Uh, this person was going through and dealing with. Um, eventually, it got to the point that they cut everybody off, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. How, how has that affected you? Um, obviously, it's been really hard. I think at the beginning of the whole thing, I just kept thinking, you know, what if I had done things differently? What if I mm -hmm. knew earlier? What, you know, there's so many what ifs. Right, right. right. Um, and I don't want to say it's gotten easier because it definitely hasn't. But I guess I'd say it's gotten more bearable in the sense that being able to talk about it with friends, with family, with a therapist, with whoever, mm -hmm. it just makes me realize, like, I'm not alone in this. There and you go. Bingo. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. So you were going to say that I'm not alone, that I have people, I have an awesome support network, and... I almost feel like not saying it could have been prevented by any means, but if this person had maybe felt comfortable talking to someone, whether it be a therapist or a friend or a family member, maybe things could have been different. And again, I'm not a professional. I don't know that for sure. But, but what you said is obvious from your demeanor and your tone of voice that means something to you, which you just said. So it is important for people that may be struggling to know that they can reach out and that maybe they need to reach out, which is the whole point of Narc Abuse TV, no matter what our general experience may be or individual experience. Overall, reaching out is part of the theme of what we're talking about today and every show that uh, we try to do on our end over here as a public service is that there, the paranoia, there are patterns that can develop. A person may need to know that they don't have to feel stigmatized, but to reach out. Uh, you're speaking on behalf of people who are the loved ones of someone that needs mental health. Yeah. It, affect, it affected you to the point that you were motivated to do the beads. Yeah. Uh, now you're taking your funds, you're taking your time to start up something, August of 2020. Mm-hmm. You've moved to the point of telling, being on someone's podcast, doing their show, uh, then telling your story, and my goodness, you're just going downhill. Now you're on my show. So I, I just <laughs> – no, I'm just kidding. No, no. You, uh, you absolutely um, have become a person that has affected the people you've interviewed on your show and others that uh, have purchased and donated uh, towards your, toward your cause. Um, how do you become this queen of beads? Uh, I'm, no, hey, I give everybody nicknames and I give off. Listen, I'm calling you and we can, I'll fight for you, sister. I'll fight for you and whoever wants on Instagram wants to fight. You are officially today. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You are officially today the queen of beads.
Love okay. That. So, so as the queen of beads, you need to get a line of shirts that say that queen of yeah. beads, you know, and put your, put your IG, uh, handle, put your IG handle on there and, uh, put your cause, you know, donate to mental health America. Anyhow. So okay. as the queen of beads, how did, how did you get this ability to do beads? Was this self-taught? Was this a generational thing? Did you go to school or are you just that bad that you just said, you know what, I'm doing beads and I'll, I'll teach myself. You know, it's funny. So definitely did not go for to school. Um, but I remember going to the store and thinking, oh, like, this will be like a fun project. Like, I can't do that art. I could see you doing that. It just popped in my head. I literally could see you walking and go, hey, I think I could do that. It'll be fun. Oh, I got this. And like, for way that, to go. I have like very big hands. Okay. So <laughs> okay, wait, wait, hold on. So no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> hold on you are the first guest i've ever had i don't know i'm, I'm approaching 200 some odd segments you're the first person that's ever took their hand and put it on your you know i got big hands i was like that's pretty cool all right i just had to i had to say that for my own edification you know joy and edification go ahead it's important to the story so okay. i didn't even like think about it i was just looking at all these beads and of course i chose the ones that are like I think they're two millimeters so they're really really small You're like, i have the biggest hands let me find the smallest little bead yeah <laughs> okay eventually. i noticed that i did notice that i was going like man she's bad because i can't even see those things i got to put three pairs of my glasses on just to look at it go ahead yeah. and so i went with my boyfriend to this store and he was like <laughs> do you want to get a needle for these like how are you going to do them and i was like I'm gonna do them with my hands. It's a typical. By the way, that's a typical guy question because you know we we're problem solvers, yeah. sort of, sort of, and we're going like, well, you can't. Pretty much, we're saying you can't do that, but he don't want to say it out loud. Yeah. You know, he goes like, I'll show you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be fine. And so I remember when I first started, it would make take me maybe like I don't know, thirty minutes to make one bracelet, and like okay. they flying everywhere they would fl fall on the floor and <laughs> i'm not laughing at you i just <laughs> go ahead <laughs> it's fine oh and man i somehow still really enjoyed making them i think way to go the final product i was like this is great and so <laughs> just by making oh, continuing it's gotten a little bit easier and it's actually funny so my boyfriend's sister was home for or from grad school over okay. christmas break all right and i asked her i was like do you want to help me make bracelets and she was like yeah sure and i think by the time she made like one bracelet i'd made 10. <laughs> whoa. Wait, yeah. whoa wait 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 what's the time frame between when she showed up and when you got started was that like a week two weeks three months I started at the same time no no i meant from when you first got the beads and did it took a half hour Oh. Did, was it a month or two? Did you get that good? And it was like four months. Really, man, not yeah. not bad. You cranked yeah. out ten. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um. So it's definitely gotten a lot easier, but probably using a needle will still help. I just choose not to. Oh wait, wait, whoa, whoa! You don't use a needle? Mm mm. All by hand. Seriously. Seriously, I'm that stubborn. No, I wouldn't. No, uh, I wouldn't say that. No, I'm not going to fight you on the stubborn. Your boyfriend know that better than me. I'm way over here, so I can't say. But when it comes to determination, I'll, I'll, I'll subtract the S word out and stick the D word in there. Determination. You're yeah. you're you're determined, uh, and you're obviously focused. Uh, but more importantly, um, your heart is leading you to do it. It's not just your head. So so that's pretty cool. So now, how long does it take you to make one bracelet now? Probably about five minutes. I was so happy you said that because if you would have said twenty nine minutes, I would have been like, "Man, you ain't made no progress." <laughs> it's like it's twenty, it's thirty minutes to twenty nine minutes. Okay, so it takes you about uh, you said about uh, five minutes. About five minutes. So, yeah. so where where have you made progress when it comes to doing this? Uh, you were just doing maybe small bracelets, bracelets, and then you went to bigger bracelets and so forth. What has been the growth process in you doing this? I think I first started with 
kind of DIY bracelets. So having people okay. tell me, you know, what colors they wanted, if they wanted to add me to add like a letter or a word. Um, and then I got more creative with it. I thought of, you know, designs myself and started making them. So I think that's definitely somewhere um, that I grew, which is great. And yeah, just still brainstorming ideas. I started adding stickers to my website as well. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I want to add more stuff. I have a brainstorming session tomorrow. And yeah, yeah we'll see where that takes me. I love your spirit. <laughs> I, I just actually, truthfully, that's what it was when I first saw your page. Uh, I saw that and I went like, I don't care if she was make, making hubcaps and stringing them together. I just love your determination and your spirit. It was like, now, by the way, if you do hubcaps, that might really crack the ceiling there. A lot of guys might start buying them and putting it in their garage for mental health. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a weird idea I just threw out there. If somebody does it, don't send me money. Just I throw ideas out all the time. But if somebody starts stringing together hubcaps, that would be funny now that I think about it. But anyhow, um, when it comes to what you're doing, um, your determination rings out all through the page because in each step since you started, we talked a little bit in the pre-show in August of 2020, you have just been growing as a human being, uh, as a professional human being. And as a woman, you have just been growing along the way in the community of mental health. Yeah. Uh, truly you're an exemplary woman, uh, yeah. at such a young age, you're very exemplary in what you're trying to do. Uh, you can put many people to shame that have uh, paper on the wall uh, of what you're doing because you're finding a way to touch people's lives about mental health without uh, having to to come in with uh, a lot of uh, baggage and dump it on the desk and go like, look, I have all these doctorates I've done. You you are not doing that. You're coming in with your beads and you're and you're punching through and making a difference. I appreciate you more than you know for Thank what you're doing. I just wanted you to know that. Now, I'm going to have some fun, and okay. this is where – this is. it doesn't mean I haven't been having fun. <laughs> now I'm going to have more fun, not at your expense, but we're going to do it together because okay. together is much better than, than picking on people. So here we go. Um, when it comes to the beads, now I'm going to start a series of questions, okay. and I'm going to start – okay, so again, you trust me, so, and I, you know, right, here we go. Series of questions, but they're all leading to somewhere at the end. Okay. okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, because I did ask you before we went on, I asked you, I ask you the question that I often ask people, are you nervous? And uh, your res your response was, you weren't nervous per se, you were what? Excited. Okay, so let's see if we can keep the excitement there before you um, throw something at the camera and go like, I'm never doing this again with Paxton. So, <laughs> here, we, so here we go. Okay. You uh, do the beads so that it can impact other people. Mm -hmm. But you've had interviews with individuals on your show. How have they impacted you? Oh. Name, name one person. Now, we're going to talk more, but let's start off with one person okay. that you can think of that they said something that has helped you grow. Who would that guest be? I feel like they all have said something... That's the safe answer, but we're going to go with one. No, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm picking on you. I'm picking on you. No, you're right. I said I wasn't going to, but I just did. Go ahead. I think my last Instagram guest, okay. Benji, we talked a lot okay. about perfectionism. And say, Let's say her name again in her page. I know of who you speak, but say her name again in her, no, say her name again, at least oh, so people can find her. Dr. Menji. Okay. And All right. Now go, go ahead. You were saying. I.E. Um, but so we talked a lot about perfectionism and the way that, you know, it's important to lead an altruistic life and not just aim to be perfect, which I mm -hmm. feel like, at least in my experience, sometimes get confused between the two. So for example, in high school, you're always aiming to get straight A's, to be in AP classes and honor classes, to get into the best college, to have all these extracurriculars, to have like this perfect life. When in reality, of course, you know, you don't want to lower your standards. You want to do your best. 
Mm -hmm. But your best, it's important to not acknowledge, is not going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. So when you're making the beads, do you feel the need to be perfect? No, I don't. Um, but you do feel a need for there to be quality. Yes, absolutely. And because, you're, because your heart is in it, so there's a measure of quality. Is, uh, so the possibility could be that they can, too, be confused between perfection and and someone just wanting to give their their best, as it were. Yeah, exactly. And I think just realizing, like you said, you know, nobody's going to be perfect. It's more important to be happy and to give your best and to not put that additional pressure on yourself. Right, right. So, so uh, there's someone that had an impact on you. How many, uh, rather, who else out of the many guests that you've had who else has said something to you that you could think of? Now, you had to go out and reach out to them, get them on your show. And there was something about them that you liked off of their page. What are some things about that person or that they said or you saw on their page? And who are they that touched your life in the mental health field? Oh, so many good questions. Okay, let me think. I told you I was going to do it to you. I don't know. Hey. <laughs> no. Go ahead. Um. I'm really bad at remembering Instagram handles, which is something I really need to work That's on. That's okay. We'll just go with their name. But her name is Valentine. Okay. And not necessarily that she provided, I mean, she did say like a lot of insightful things, but I think I'm thinking of her more so because she's a doctor. So she's in her okay. residence. Mm -hmm. And she also struggles with mental health issues. So just seeing, you know, someone who's in the medical field, right. but also struggling with mental health issues, I think is a good reminder that it really affects everyone, even the professionals, right. even the people that are helping you. Now, um, out of the experiences that you've had so far since August mm -hmm. in the community of mental health, there are moments in which uh, you're dealing with daily living during COVID. Mm -hmm. How has COVID affected you and your family and loved ones at this time? Yeah, so I've been really lucky. I have kept my job, which is amazing, especially considering how many people have lost their jobs, are struggling to get food, just like the basic essentials. Um, so obviously I'm very grateful for that. And no one in my family or in my close circle of friends has lost their jobs either. So like that's been really good. I think something I struggle with is just finding some sense of normalcy, mm -hmm. even the limited activities um, finding time to just go outside and get some fresh air, especially during the week where it's just so busy at work, you know, constant meetings back to back, um, doing work. I'm also taking a class right now. So really just finding time to just slow down, take a second and be able to enjoy, enjoy a moment to reset, I think has been a little bit difficult, especially with COVID. Because typically, you know, you'll hang out with friends, yes. I'll go to the bars, the restaurant, go to the movies, and at least, like, right now, I don't feel safe doing that, any of that at the moment. Right. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel uh, lost in the sense that they're not uh, comfortable with doing those things. So I, I, I mentioned this to you. Uh, posting that you had January 3rd. Posting you had January 3rd. Uh, you listed three things that you were going to try to look forward to doing in 2021. One was practice gratitude. Why did you post that and how is it going? <laughs> All right, let's go to, let's go to number two. No, no. Go ahead. So I posted it because I, as you mentioned, and I guess I come across this way, I'm very determined. And I always just think about... I'm glad you didn't say the S word, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm 
I mean, I always think, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Okay, you know, I got a new job. Great. How am I getting promoted? Okay, great. I got promoted. Okay, how am I, you know? And it's just, again, taking a step back and saying, just looking at like all the progress I've made. Right, right, have, right, right. Um, and just, you know, this year has not been easy for anyone, but I do count my blessings. I think, obviously, like I've had my own struggles, but by no means am I struggling as much as other people. And it's really important to recognize that. And, and it, that is true, without a doubt. Others yeah. are indeed finding them, their lives turned upside down with a, a, a pandemic fear that has gripped them to the point that they can't see their way out yeah. in the system of things that we're living in. But you have been able to, to manage it, but by no means uh, are you ignoring it. You still get to sit with the, 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 your feelings uh, because they are yours. <laughs> yeah. They are yours, and they, they need to be addressed. That's why practice uh, gratitude uh, is, uh, I, I like the way you said that, that uh, you're going to shoot for that. And then you followed it up with two more uh, on this post on January 3rd. Uh, you put learn to say no as number two. Yes. Why did you have that as your number two? So that is mostly specific for work. I am a project <laughs> manager. Wait, let, well, I can't post this then. Your job's going to find no. out. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Just My man knows this, um, and I also don't think she has Instagram, but she tells me <laughs> that, that yeah. it's okay to say no. So okay. I'm a project manager, and basically after sales um, sells our software, they'll come to us to get a project manager and consultants to implement the software for the customer. Mm -hmm. And... I have a really hard time saying no to any more projects. So if someone comes to me and says, hey, Yo-Yo, do you want to take on another project? I'm oh, like, wow. yeah, sure. Oh, and wow. A week later, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have so much going on. Yep. And really learning to say no and realizing that it's okay to say no. It's not going to mean oh. that, you know, they're going to think less of you. Um, mental health is just so important. You really need to consider what's best for you. And, and space mentally, having a mental space to uh, appreciate the good work that uh, we accomplish, uh, to recognize where we need to make adjustments. It's kind of hard to do that when we're piling task upon task. Yeah. We never get room to just take a step back or sit with our, 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 our good accomplishments and our accomplishments uh, that uh, we can take uh, a measure of self-esteem and, and, and uh, pride in. Exactly. Uh, the third one. First one was practice gratitude. The second one was learn to say no. That's two. The third one was ask for help. Yes. So, again, that one was mostly work specific. I think I'm one of those people that likes to figure things out on my own. And I, I noticed that on your page. <laughs> which is a good thing. No. But, you, hey, it's okay. That, okay. To that's ask. how it, yeah, to ask for help, you know, that's what your manager is there for. That's what your coworkers are there for. Nobody knows everything. And so just realizing that, you know, it's okay if I need to go to my coworker to ask right. them for a favor and not feel guilty mm -hmm. about that. I, I like that part about you that you recognize about yourself, about that uh, you like to figure things out. Uh, another thing that drew me to your page and to your personality and to the character of woman that you are, that you don't, you don't feel a need to sit back and have someone else do it for you. But at the same time, you feel concern enough to help other people. Yeah. Uh, so, so I like the way you, you strike uh, that measured balance in both cases. And uh, look, you know, be, you know, beads. You, I mean, did you ever think you would be doing this? No. <laughs> I just, I had to ask that question. That was yeah. one of my main questions to ask you. And I love the expression. I didn't expect it, but the expression yeah. on your face. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't, I don't always watch my shows back, uh, but I, I'm gonna watch this one back just for this moment when I ask that question because <laughs> your facial expression in that moment was like, no, it's just like, like. 
I would, I would never date that guy. It was like, it was like, oh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even talk to him. But I, I like the success you're having yeah, by doing it. It's been great, and I really enjoy doing it. And I yeah. just want to grow it even more. But <laughs> how, how how do you want to grow it more? Oh, now we're gonna turn this into a marketing meeting. I'm gonna go like, I want to help you, girl. I'm gonna help you. Let me give you my marketing one on one on your stuff now. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> So I really enjoy doing my Instagram lives and definitely okay. those going. Um, and you and you're and you're very you're very good at it. You're, you. you're very you're you're becoming more and more comfortable with uh, allowing people to see you. Yeah. Uh, the 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 you the inside you. Yeah. And the more they see that, which is why I wanted you on so bad. I wanted to just unwrap you in front of everybody and go like, and you know what? This girl's pretty cool. She's got more. She's got more skippy peanut butter than you think. She <laughs> she she's smoother than you think. She just she just finding her way. But go ahead. You were saying you like doing the lives. I like doing the Instagram lives. I think my executive assistant is done. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say he's he's probably going like, oh, okay, I'm out of here. This guy, it's cool. He's like, he, he goes like, he goes, I can watch it later. He says, I can watch it later. Go ahead. So the Instagram lives. I enjoy the bracelets and I'm just trying to think of ways, you know, I've added stickers to my website and I'm trying to think of other ideas. I was thinking yeah. maybe journals because I know a lot of people who struggle with mental health issues mm -hmm. by journaling. Yeah. Um, I was also thinking along those lines, maybe pens or pencils. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be cool to do mugs. I'm just not sure how the shipping part would work. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. it would break along the way. Let me tell you, hey, let, let's do this. Let's do this. We need to talk, girl. <laughs> you and I need to talk because you and we don't mean on social media. Privately, we need to have a marketing one-on-one and then you go do whatever you're going to do. I don't want no money, girl. I don't want nada. But your success, okay, I had to do that. <laughs> All right. So anyhow, um, uh, we, we get a chance to talk. I, I, I yeah. saw your stuff, and, I, and a lot of stuff came to mind. I didn't mention it to you in the pre-show. <laughs> and, and you would be here to laugh at that. Anyhow, uh, thank you, my dear Ann, uh, Ann Crosby. Um, I want you to feel free not to talk with me, but just let me throw some things your way. Absolutely. Because um, there's there's some things that uh, there's some spaces within uh, different communities where uh, your stuff would truly be appreciated, uh, even to a greater degree than what it is right now. But uh, I'm just throwing that out there to you. No, no, no problem. Uh, uh, one way up or down. But yeah. uh, whatever I'm going to say, I hope it will help you move it forward, because I'm, I want to make sure people get to to see your stuff. Um, my daughter saw, uh, one of my daughters uh, saw uh, your beads, and uh, I think she even commented at some point, maybe. Uh, um, she <laughs> I literally am in here in this studio, and I just heard her through my door going like, I'm buying one right now. She literally just said that oh. through my door over here, and I just... She makes me laugh. She makes both of my daughters make me laugh. And, and my son, too. He make me laugh, too. But um, I got to say all my children as a father, because if not, I'll be in trouble. But it also, um, uh, we'll talk. I'm, listen to me. I'm starting to filter my words, and that's not really good for these kind of shows, because then I start stuttering uh, unnecessarily. But uh, we'll get a chance to talk. And, and um, sure. they're, they're, uh, they're, they're items that need to be highlighted. I love moving forward highlighting them on my pages, all three of my public service pages uh, that are that deal with mental health so that people, the, the loyal followers I have, and I love all of you, by the way, that follow me will be able to see your items and then spread them to their friends. Uh, yeah. But um, when it comes to your page, I have a couple of more items, and then this Saturday open session with Paxton will be over. Uh, the... the uh, the Yo-Yo and Paxton show will be over for today. Uh, but I do want to tell you this. Um, there, there are some things, and, I, and I hopefully I can get them all in. There are some questions that I do need to run by you and yeah. uh, people uh, wanted to ask you that I have. But uh, I'm going to go to something that you got posted here. Bear with me. 
It says, today is the day you rid yourself of anything that distracts from your best life. Let me reread that. Uh, this was uh, dated January 3rd, January 3rd. Today is the day you rid yourself of anything that distracts from your best life. Uh, now, when you posted that, there, there, you have some comments there that, that, that you made. Uh, but one is this question in your comments. What are you doing to live your best life in 2021? This was a post that you made. What was your thinking in your heart intention when you put this on social media? What were you thinking about? I honestly don't remember the post. The first person that I, that I had on the show <laughs> that only asked what, and you said, okay, let's do this. Since you don't remember a <laughs> post like that that you posted and what you were thinking, what does it make you think now, Yo-Yo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh seriously, I can stop the show right now because, no. the la you know, I was trying to make you laugh the whole time and you just did it. I, I'm happy now. We're good. <laughs> she came She came out, everybody, dimples and all, because she went like, I don't remember. <laughs> I feel so bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me that question. Okay. And when what? you were reading that quote, I was like, I didn't write that. <laughs> I don't think. Um, actually, actually, you posted it. You didn't write it. Okay. Well, uh, it was somebody else's quote, but go ahead. So, what I think I probably meant <laughs> going back to time. I'm sorry. It's, just, it's funny to me. It's no. The look on your face was like, that ain't mine. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> so, if what I've learned over the past year, just like brief summary, is that life is incredibly short. And, you know, there's so many learning opportunities there's always you know what if i had done this what if i had done things differently what if whatever and just realize like you probably did your best like we said before your best is not perfect by any means and it's important to just keep a positive outlook on life because life is hard and everyone goes through challenges Everyone has their ups and downs and it's important to really just focus on the good and make your life easier, make your life better. Do the things that you enjoy, surround yourself with good people because you don't want to spend your short life with, you know, people that make you upset or yeah. bad vibes. You, you, um, you at a very young age, have recognized a number of things that have taken some people 30, 40 years, three or four decades to figure out. Yeah. Because of that, you're doing things that are touching the lives of people younger than you or older than you, but you're definitely hitting the lives of those who are around the same age group of you. You're having the trifecta mm -hmm. of mental health. You're, you're hitting so many different levels of people in you're a small part of the world you're reaching out to a bigger part that makes you unique and special. Now I have other questions to ask you and I'm not going to do it because I am going to, I am going to request that at some point you find it in your busy schedule of interviewing people to come back to my open session podcast page because I have some other questions for you, but I want to save them for that moment. I wanted to highlight you on this narc abuse underscore TV page for those who had no idea you existed. I, I've, I've talked to a lot of different people for questions for this show for you, and they didn't know you existed, and they were excited to find out who you were. So now they will know that when they watch this back or uh, some of them have passed through since we've been on. But um, we'll get a chance to, to get together and, and, and talk about some other things. When you have time for me in your busy schedule, because I know all of you across social media are so busy uh, in your mental health work that a little small show like me, you may not have time for. But I in the future, <laughs> well, well, thank you for feel. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I just had to. I had to look like a. You know, I was begging there for a moment. Uh, so, <laughs> and I am. 
for you to come back to open session podcast, we get a chance to do that. But this particular show, I want to end it this way with you. And here we go. It has nothing to do with your page. I wanted to do this to you and with you today. Oh, it's just, yeah, I, you should say that because trust me, I don't do this with everybody. So I wanted to do this with you. Okay, here we go. I want you to tell me after I go first, I want you to tell me a good, funny, clean joke that you know. I get to go first. I've never done this. So I just want to do this. So I get to go first. Okay. Okay. All right. And then you get to go. Okay. All right. Now, the, the two and a half people that are watching this live, they can feel free to vote. But mainly, people can do it in the comments later on or whatever the case may be. If nobody gives a comment, of course, that means I win. So let me let me do this now. <laughs> okay, all right, that's just in case I win. Now, <laughs> if your joke is better, <laughs> which I'm hoping oh. it isn't. <laughs> no, no, your, your joke will be better. No matter what, you're gonna win, I say so. But uh, here we go, my joke first, all right? Hello. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dwayne. Dwayne who? Dwayne the bathtub because I'm drowning. <laughs> That's my joke. That's my joke. I waited to have you on the show to do a joke session with you. And you, oh, I got a thumbs up. So no matter I, what everybody else says, she gave me, Yo-Yo gave me thumbs up. I okay. like that. Okay. So now I... I'm going to talk uh, and stretch my words out to give you time to, to, to be ready so that I can, you know, this is when I do this in the show where I, I talk kind of long. I'm giving my guests time to think. And, and so, okay, so what joke do you have, uh, Yo-Yo? Knock, knock. Okay, you better not say the same joke. You better <laughs> not say the same joke because that actually would be seriously funny. Uh, who's there? Bill. Boo. Boo. <laughs> boo hoo don't cry it was just a joke <laughs> all right okay okay all right you win you totally win okay i don't know many jokes surprisingly you don't you don't seriously you don't okay you and your boyfriend are gonna need to sit down and like turn the tv off and no social media and come up with two jokes or three jokes between you so i don't know just for the fun of it. Uh, yeah. That's my pres that's my prescription for the weekend. Just you guys sit down okay. and go like, okay, what joke do you know? What joke? Okay, now we need a shared joke. So when we go out with people, we have a shared joke that they don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that actually is bringing our show to an end. And uh, you were excited. Uh, you were not nervous. I tried to make you nervous before the show because I like nervous guests. It just <laughs> I love I love seeing them just totally relax as it goes. Um, the number of people that uh, you have touched by means of your beads, you will never be able to get a true count of who that is, uh, just like a therapist can't or a psychotherapist. There's a lot of people that professionals touch, and they don't have an idea. Uh, I think of people like uh, Kim Saeed and, and uh, uh, Elizabeth Shaw, uh, other people. Uh, uh, there are many other people, Narcaway, uh, uh, Understanding the Narc, and, and others. There's so many throughout the the, the mental health field that don't know who they're touching you're in that category thank you, you so my dear woman are in that category so your boyfriend has to make sure he takes you on a shopping spree no I'm just get just take you on a shopping no, get in here. No, hey okay. yeah get in here man you better take her <laughs> you are touching lives thank you more than you know so don't change a thing thank don't stop don't change a thing and don't listen to the knuckleheads and those who are negative because Thanks. they're just they're just jealous. So you do you, but do it better than the way you would do it. Just keep getting better each day. But you got to stop every now and then and smell the roses, like kind of like what you were talking about earlier, uh, practicing gratitude, practicing gratitude. Yeah. Thank you very much. A lot of people <laughs> were looking to hear from you. You're so kind. You're so nice. All right. So I got to do this. Everybody's got to have a drop of the mic moment in which they get to say whatever they want to say before they go, just long as it's not on certain subjects, and we already know what those are. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, feel free to say something to the mental health community and those who may be just getting started on their journey of strengthening themselves, those who are worried about being stigmatized, 
what does your heart want to say to them before we go? I think, I, or not I think, I know, I want to say, just remember that it's okay not to be okay. Everyone is going through something. Even the people who are always smiling and laughing, you never know what's going on behind closed doors. Right. Don't listen to social media. You know, people post their best lives. They'll post photos of themselves on vacation or out with friends or on a date. But like you, they're all struggling. You know, no one's going to post the days where they're crying and can't get out of bed. And so really just remember that it's okay not to be okay. Find someone that you really trust in your inner circle, whether that be a friend or a family member or even a doctor. And really just knowing that talking about it makes such a difference, even if it's so hard. And you'll even be surprised at times who is willing to talk to you and you know what their thoughts are. You, 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 hit, you hit a chord, it's right there on the screen. As you were talking, you were touching lives and puts on there, stay positive, reach out for help. Yes. Uh, everybody, please, if you are going through something, reach out to the many guests that have been on my show, the many guests that have been on uh, Yo-Yo show, and anyone that uh, you can, send them a DM, tell them how you're feeling, uh, look for someone to give you a listening ear. Uh, there is someone that will listen to you. And as Yo-Yo just mentioned, there's someone that will talk with you. Um, I'm not stepping on your drop the mic moment. I got to go now. No. Um, we, we've had fun. Uh, enjoy yourself in North Carolina. And uh, I, I, I decided this morning when I got up that I wasn't going to do any fastballs at you today. Uh, <laughs> we were just going to do softballs. But yeah. trust me, the next time we get together, you in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much. You're a beautiful person, Thank a good you. heart and an extremely intelligent, determined uh, young lady. Uh, sky's the limit. No ceiling on your, uh, on your growth. Don't let nobody put a ceiling on your growth. You, <laughs> you, you stay the same and keep moving forward. Take yeah. care of yourself, everybody. We love each and every one of you. Get the help you need when you need it. Reach out to Yo-Yo. To, uh, but whatever you do, please, get some of her beads, people. Get some of her beads. Donate or get some of her beads. Don't be stingy. Open up your wallet and get some of her beads. I, I love you all. We'll see you guys again. Uh, we'll get some more shows coming up, but you'll notice that when you see them posted on my page. Thank you, Yo-Yo. Thanks so much. We'll see everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.